Hello and welcome. Today I will be showing how to install Windows 3.11 onto this Toshiba Porygy T3600CT. This laptop came out in 1994. Is it possible after 26 years to still support this laptop? We'll find out. First, I need MS-DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.11. I also need raw write for Windows to write bootable floppy disk. I use it to write the DOS install disks onto floppy. This is not the same as copying over the files as simply copying over the files will not make the disk bootable. I am using three floppies, but if I only had one floppy, I could reuse the same floppy for each disk. I want to replace the existing 250MB hard drive with solid state storage. Even though the hard drive still works, which is amazing, I don't want to be relying on this moving part that was made 26 years ago. The T3600CT was one of the first Core J models that Toshiba made. Because of that, there is no easy access to the hard drive, and replacing it involves nearly disassembling the whole laptop. Lots of the plastic pieces snap together. I am pleasantly surprised by how well this old plastic has held up. For something this old that I got off eBay, I was downright astonished when I received it, and it was still working. The battery and floppy drive that came with it both still work as well, which is even better than the two floppy drives that came with the newer laptops my dad bought. I removed the door for the memory, but this is unnecessary as I would find out later. I'm not sure what this is, maybe battery acid. I remove all the screws, but the keyboard is still attached firmly. Turns out there's some sort of adhesive, but I am able to gently pry the keyboard out. What's underneath looks familiar. It looks like the 620CT I have worked on previously, which will make a cameo here later. There's a 486 in this laptop. This laptop predates Intel Pentium. To get to the hard drive, I need to remove the screen. To remove the screen, there's more plastic snaps I need to unsnap all around the laptop. I remember to disconnect the screen and LED cables. It would be very bad to try removing the screen with the cable still attached. Pretty neat that the 486 processor is just sitting there naked with no heatsink or fan. It's pretty great that a few years later Toshiba would be making laptops without plastic snaps anymore. These old plastic parts only get more brittle with time. The amount of force required to snap them apart may just break them. I don't see myself opening up this laptop very frequently. I know it's supposed to come apart, why isn't it coming apart? Finally, I separate the top from the bottom. The hard drive bay is now clearly exposed at the top left. There's a cable which I need to detach to be able to remove the hard drive caddy. Here we have the 2.5 inch hard drive. It's also amazing that this form factor has stayed nearly unchanged up until SSDs started coming in a variety of smaller form factors. But even today you can buy hard drive or SSDs in this form factor. Only the screw positions have changed slightly in modern drives. In its place I'm putting in a compact flash card. It needs a 2.5 inch IDE adapter in order to connect. I chose to use a compact flash card because compact flash uses the ATA standard, which is the same as that on the hard drive, thus ensuring maximum compatibility. Also, a laptop this old actually has a limit on the maximum capacity hard drive it will recognize. 
It's nearly impossible to find new hard drives and SSDs less than 64 gigabytes nowadays. I had to resort to eBay to get a 1 gigabyte CF card. I'm sticking with the theme I bought a Toshiba one. After putting the laptop back together just barely enough to be functional, I connect the floppy drive and insert MS-DOS Disk 1. I turn the laptop on and run FDisk to set up disk partitions. I remove all existing partitions and create a new primary DOS partition using the maximum size. I make sure to mark the partition as active so that it is bootable. Now I try to format the drive by running Format C, but it is here that I learned that the shift key isn't working on this laptop. This means no colons, which is required for this command. But not all hope is lost yet. I decide to remove the CF card and try putting it into the 620CT. Should things go well, I can use the 620CT to format the partition and the T3600CT may just recognize and use that. Again, I attach the floppy drive to the 620CT and insert DOS Disk 1 and turn the laptop on. To my surprise, it went directly into the DOS setup program. I tried to run the setup program but that fails because there is no formatted partition. Luckily, the setup program returns me back to the command prompt and I run format c colon slash s to format the partition, which works. Now I run setup again to run the DOS setup program. This also now succeeds. I'm beginning to see the light at the end of the tunnel. When prompted, I insert disk 2 and 3. If I only had one floppy disk, this would be the time when I would eject the current disk, put it in the modern PC, write the next disk onto it, then put it back into this floppy drive. It finishes. I'm able to install DOS onto the CF card and boot from it. I almost forget that this isn't the laptop I'm supposed to be fixing. Now I connect the CF card to the modern PC. I use mdisk to mount the Windows 3.11 install floppies and copy all the files inside into a win311 directory that I create on the card. Here I don't need to use raw write and only need to copy and paste the files because the CF card is now bootable to DOS and I can just run the setup program once I'm in DOS. We're back to where we left off. I put the CF card back into the laptop and attached the screen and keyboard so it is functional. I turn the laptop on, navigate to the Win311 directory and run setup. This is one old school setup program. I add win to the autoexec.bat file so when the computer starts up it will automatically start Windows 3.11. I put the laptop back together completely and check that everything still works. Windows 3.1 was on the first computer I remember using. This is a nostalgic trip. I'm now almost as old as my dad was back when I watched him playing on his 386 computer and playing all the latest games which I may review one day. Isn't it insane that Windows used to be a program that you would run from DOS?